Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here, and welcome to DCS World 2.9.14, an Eagle Dynamics AH64D Apache module. Welcome to Tutorial 8, FCR in ATM. FCR, standing for Fire Control Radar, and ATM being one of the three modes the radar has, Air Target Mode. The other modes being GTM for Ground Targeting Mode, and R map or radar map mode. We're going to cover air target mode or air targeting mode today. Uh, and as the name might suggest, this is the mode used for uh, displaying and tracking airborne targets. Uh, the system can differentiate between fixed wing and helicopters, and it can also differentiate between um, stationary or moving targets of those two types. So, um, over here, we have some helicopters which are moving around. These are perfect for this kind of thing. Uh, so we're going to use them as our um, kind of test targets. There's supposed to be four of them, but I've lost one. That's a little bit strange. Anyway, in any case, uh, first, before we begin, we're going to go over the controls that we'll need to make use of the FCR. Let's uh, jump to my little document. Uh, we're using the TEDAC as the example here, so we've got controls spread over the left grip and the right grip. Uh, you'll find these controls on the Pilots Collective and Cyclic as well, though. Um, so the main ones we're going to use, uh, we're making use of the Site Select. Uh, you push Site Select left to get the FCR. That's important for us today. Uh, the Site Manual Tracker. Uh, manual Tracker, pushing it left and right, allows you to... Um, slew the the FCR left and right in azimuth and then pushing it up and down adjusts the current elevation uh, you've got zoom toggle although you also have that as a, a button on the screen as well C scope toggle also available on the screen the slave toggle uh, which we used in the TEDAC as well works in the same way scan size select for the FCR you'll see on the left grip you've got the TADS one which we used last time the right grip has the FCR uh, scan size and it works in exactly the same way you're going from right to to top in a clockwise direction with wide medium narrow and zoom in exactly the same way as the tads does uh, although i'll go over these they're slightly different on the left grip uh, we have the mode select for the fcr pushing up gives you gtm pushing uh, down gives you atm and pushing right gives you gmap uh, you've got scan select pulling it down does a single scan, pushing it away gives you a continuous scan. You've got queued search here as a push button, and then the store target point button here, which is the same one we used with the TADS. Uh, so those are the controls. You're going to want to map these uh, to stuff on your controller so that you can make use of them more easily. Jumping back into the cockpit, I'll very quickly show you my mapping that I'm using just now. Uh, I'm using an Xbox controller, uh, and you can see that... Uh, my right hand grip sight select switch. Uh, I've got FCR mapped here, but I've also, I've got all the different directions mapped. So pushing sight select to the left gives you FCR, up gives you helmet mounted display, right gives you TADS, down gives you link. Uh, I then also have uh, my mode switches for the FCR. Uh, pushing that up gives you GTM, down gives you ATM, right gives you R map, uh, left gives you TPM, Terrain Profile Mode, which is not currently implemented, is my understanding. Um, we also have the uh, scan switch, single and continuous. And what else did we have that I was showing you guys there? I've got the, the slave button on the, the right-hand side there. Uh, and then on my axis commands, I've got my, my cursor and my manual tracker. So, let's see, how do we get set up here? Uh, I'm in the CPG seat. Well, actually, for starters, let's get ourselves pointing the right way. Uh, I'm going to tell our pilot to turn to about 060. That's approximately where these bad lads are. Hmm, actually, it looks like they're flying away from us just now, but if we need to, we'll reset. That is all four of them. Nice, we're on course. We're facing basically the right way. So, let's hide the pilot for now and also... Hide our helmet-mounted display. 
I'm going to shift to the the left here. You can display the FCR on the on the TEDAC, um, but it's actually handier to display it on one of your MFDs. I'm going to choose the left MFD here because then we get the the keys around the outside. So you can actually press FCR and get access to the FCR immediately, or you can go to the main menu and choose FCR on the left hand side under Mission. Uh, from here, you've got a bunch of standard controls. Uh, you can see on the bottom left our currently selected site, which right now is the helmet mounted display, and on the bottom right we have our current acquisition source, which is fixed. Uh, you have a line here showing you the current uh, direction that the FCR is facing, and you have a dotted line, which is the previous direction that the FCR was facing. This is either because you've slewed it or because the uh, helicopter is maneuvered, so you've got that. Um, we've got buttons for the acquisition source here. I'm going to leave it on fixed. You've got the util page and you've got C scope. C scope allows you to put uh, symbology from the FCR and actually from other sources into your helmet mounted display and onto the TADS, which is quite good for situational awareness. I'd recommend most of the time you have this turned on. It's pretty good. If we go into the util page, uh, we've got some things that we can do here. We make sure that the FCR is powered. You have to do that before you're able to actually make use of it and then make sure that you've not stowed your FCR. Uh, and you've got the the, um, the mast control here. You want it in normal. You don't want it powered off or pinned, I think it says normally. And the rest of this doesn't do very much. Um, you've got the RFI settings, but RFI is not implemented yet. And the priority scheme, this actually is implemented. So let's quickly note this. Uh, you've got schemes A, B, and C. Uh, you'll see those uh, on the screen and on the helmet mounted display when the FCR is the selected sensor. Um, for air to air, priority schemes A and B are the same. They will prioritize stationary airborne targets over moving ones. And if you switch it to Charlie mode, uh, then the moving ones are the priority, not the stationary ones. So this just allows you to flip between whether stationary or moving ones are the priority. And then we can jump back out. So first thing we want to do is uh, we want to push our sensor select to the left to get FCR. You'll see that now at the bottom left uh, we have C-FCR. That means that the CPG has FCR control. Uh, and then we can also change our mode. Uh, we're going to set our mode to uh, ATM. So you see this is the, the mode switch here. Up gives me GMT. Right gives me our map, down gives me ATM, and left is not implemented yet. So we want it in ATM. Nothing on the screen confirms that you're in ATM. However, the format of the page will be kind of obvious because um, ATM initially is in a 360 degree scan, so you get these concentric circles. Uh, note that your maximum range is eight kilometers. It's quite short ranged. So uh, these are showing you two, four, six, and eight kilometer rings. And then you have indications for your 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, nine o'clock. Um, so that's the basic, the basics you've got there. Um, you've also got an indication of current elevation here. So if I do, if I push manual tracker up, elevation goes up. If I push manual tracker down, elevation goes down. Note that you can also control the elevation using these arrows here in steps. When you're controlling the elevation, you're going to see maximum and minimum uh, altitudes for scan volumes in feet. Uh, so actually, we probably want to drop that just a little bit. There we go. That's going to give us a lower scan volume. And then you're going to see acquisition source here, which is fixed in our case, and the current selected scheme, which is scheme A right now. Uh, target gives you access to uh, the targeting um, menu. We'll go over that a little bit later. C scope we already covered. Uh, and when you're in uh, the the wide mode, which we are right now, there's no slewing controls because you're already scanning 360 degrees. You can't scan more than 360 degrees. Uh, but if we go to one of the other modes, then you will get slewing controls. So let's go over those anyway. Uh, wide, which is what we're in just now, gives us 360 degrees, and a complete scan will take approximately six seconds. If I push down, then I'm going to get medium, which is 180 degrees, and that's a between three and six second scan. And you'll note that we now have these slew buttons here. These will slew through 90 degrees at a time. So just be aware of that. Or if I use the manual tracker and push it left or right, I can get an exact heading. So note that we have this symbol here, 
which looks like kind of two filled brackets. That's showing us the current uh, heading of the FCR. So like I can point it due north and that's us going due north. Yeah, I could press slave and then de-slave again. You'll see that it says fixed when I slave and then de-slave because it's slaving to the fixed point. If I had something else selected here, let's say we wanted to look at the pilot's helmet mounted sight, I could slave. It's not letting me do that actually. Uh, the gunners. Oh, there we go. Okay, maybe with an AI pilot, it doesn't let you do that. So I'm slaved to my helmet mounted display just now and then de-slaved. So just be aware of that and I'll move it back to the center. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll leave it on fixed because that's actually quite handy uh, and I've accidentally slewed it down. So uh, yeah, anyway, that's uh, that's medium. If we go narrow, then uh, we're doing 90 degrees and that takes between 1.5 and 3 seconds to scan. And if I hit zoom, then uh, we've got a 45 degree scan and that's uh, taking as little as 0.75 of a second or as much as uh, 1.5 seconds. Um, so yeah, we can have very, very targeted scans and the benefit being that these scan much more quickly. Okay, so you'll see that I've got my little scan controller here. Pulling it towards me gives me continuous. Pushing it away gives me a single. Actually, I told you the wrong way around earlier. So I'm going to do this uh, do this 180 degree scan, this uh, medium scan. I'm going to hit single and then release. And you'll see that we see the bar go back and forth. Um, it will do, I think it's two complete scans. Let's wait for it to complete. There we go. So it's two complete sweeps back and forth, uh, and that is a, a complete single scan. And you'll see that we now have targets. So, and we also have some additional items that have appeared on the screen now. Uh, we have a range, a radar, R for radar range, 6.6 .6 kilometers to our current next to shoot target. I can click NTS up here, or I could actually put my cursor on it and tap it. And that's going to give us the next to shoot. That will allow us to cycle through these four targets. Next to shoot. Uh, and actually, if I look up just now and turn on my helmet mounted display. Oh, actually, I've got the. Uh, I need to switch the, the, the sensor, uh, the selected sensor back to helmet mounted display. And then I will get symbology up here uh, because of the C scope. I actually need to adjust that symbology. is a bit bright. Let's bring that down a little. Uh, when the helmet mounted display is the currently selected sensor, these controls down the right hand side of the TEDAC will actually control it. I'm also going to drop the brightness all the way down to minimum and that will turn off uh, the, the TADS video feed. Because uh, if I go back to FCR, uh, it would normally give me the, the TADS video as a background and that uh, you know, washes out everything that I'm looking at. So yeah, you have to have helmet mounted display as your selected site, but then you're going to see the C-scope symbols. So that's kind of handy. In any case, let's focus back down here and get rid of that uh, helmet mounted display. And let's put ourselves back to the FCR. Uh, you've also got RFHO, that's uh, radio frequency handoff. This is data link controls. We're not going to cover that today. But you have the ability to immediately hand off targets via the data link. So those are the absolute basics of the operation. With the manual tracker, I can slew back and forth. I can uh, push away to do a single scan. Uh, and it's going to go ahead and do that. I've actually, I've messed up the azimuth completely there. So I'm going to do another scan once I fix that. Uh, or I can actually pull it towards myself and do continuous scan. And while it's, while it's scanning, you'll see it says FCR XMIT. And that's just a confirmation that you are currently transmitting. Uh, we've actually lost our helicopters. I think they flew away. So we'll we'll reset this situation in a moment uh, when we go over some other stuff. But those are the absolute basic controls there. Uh, I could actually tap the transmit uh, to put it back to a single scan and it'll complete that single scan before returning. There we go. That's it. It's stopped now. So those are the absolute basics of the operation of the radar in ATM. Okay, so I've reset the simulation quickly and brought those helicopters back so I can cover the, the very last uh, thing here. Actually, well, something I should cover is, is these symbols as well, actually. Let me pause quickly so that these helicopters don't get away from us. And um, the symbols you can see here, which look like a, 
I don't know, like a Christmas cracker, <laughs> I guess. Uh, those are for helicopters. Uh, fixed wings look like a, a horizontal line uh, with a, a downward facing carette. And now there's only a symbol, a single symbol for fixed wing, uh, and that is yeah this this line with the downward facing carette. There are three different symbols for the helicopters. You'll notice the ones we have just now are filled with a uh, dot, a black dot in the middle. That means that they are moving uh, at and they are between uh, 500 and 8,000 meters. Uh, if they are stationary, then they will display uh, either a filled icon. Uh, or uh, a non-filled icon. Now, the filled icons are for close targets between 500 uh, and 1,500 meters, and uh, stationary but further away are non-filled, and that's for targets at more than 1.5 kilometers away. So we can see that these ones are more than 1.5 kilometers away because they're filled, and the fact that they have the, the dot in the middle means they're moving. Um, so that's that's worth noting. Uh, so yeah, these are moving, uh, so that, that's kind of useful because if we store these targets, you know, we know they're moving, we know that the stored target is not going to be totally accurate. Uh, other thing is the next to shoot icon is this diamond. It's currently a dashed diamond because we're not within uh, limits, uh, and that's not surprising because currently the master arm is off and I don't have uh, a weapon wazzed. The downward facing triangle is the next next to shoot. Uh, I forget exactly what it calls that, but it's basically the one that you'll shoot next. <laughs> and we can tap NTS as before to flip through all of these. Now, uh, let's look at storing targets. Uh, again, these are moving, so storing them is not going to be super useful, but you know, if you had stationary targets, you would, you would uh, probably want to do that. Um, without going into the target menu, you can actually just immediately press your store button. Uh, let me see. Yeah, I've got that mapped there. And you'll see it, it signified down here T07 and then it disappeared after a short period. If I go into my target format, I can see the next target I create will be T08. So I've already I've already dumped a target there. I dumped a target, stored a target there. If I jump onto the right-hand side here and go back to my TSD, uh, and let's make sure we're in the attack phase, you can see that we have symbology there. Actually, let's get... Oh no, it's not, it's not C-scope, it's the FCR symbols. Uh, let me see if I can get rid of the FCR symbols very quickly. Oh, I'm in the wrong phase. I'm in the wrong phase. Yeah, attack phase, FCR targets and obstacles. That's interesting. That's actually not doing anything. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, we'll we'll leave that alone then. Um, it shows quite show. Okay. Anyway, I thought that I could actually hide those, but you can see underneath we do have this T07. So that stored a single target. The, the store switch will always work and it will always store the current NTS. The other thing we can do is we could go into target and click all. That would store all of the current FCR targets as target points. You can see at the top right how many we have. We currently have four targets uh, and the, the next one to store is going to show here. So uh, you can do that as well. Or we can store individual ones with the cursor. If I move the cursor over any one of these targets, they're all kind of in the same place. So this is not super effective and I depress the cursor select, you'll see that we've now star stored T08. And if I tried to grab another one, let's see that one. There we go, there's T09. So that all works as well. Alternatively, I could select all, and it's going to dump all four of them in one go. Um, this history thing here just shows you the, the most recent ones that you've stored. So if I come out of the target format and back in again, it's blank. Uh, although it will show me which target I'll generate next. And if I go back over to the TSD here, you'll see that I've got a whole mess of these target points here now. Uh, if I go into my coordinates window and go to, yeah, leave it on coordinates in fact, uh, you'll see that I've got a bunch of these that I created and these came from the FCR. So um, that's, the, that's the absolute basics of making use of the FCR in ATM mode. Um, there's not really anything else to show you guys right now. So in the further videos, I'll, I'll demonstrate the GTM and R map modes of the FCR as well. And then later, I will demonstrate actually guiding Hellfire missiles using the FCR. I hope you all enjoyed that. I'll see you all next time.